everyone, and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy, Ivorian Spice, and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 23. Guys, another week, couple of W's on the road. You know what I'm saying? You know, we've got my boy Amuk, we've got Jex, and we've got a special guest, Shingi. Shingi, who hosts his own show called You Know the Score. You get me, guys? So, guys, remember to subscribe to his channel as well. You know the score on YouTube as well. You get me, Shingi. Shingi, welcome, first of all, innit? Like, how are you, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. Obviously, just uh, preparing for the festivities, you know what I'm saying? Uh, In the next couple of days, boy. So, yeah, man. Trying to be in good spirits, but, yeah. Man United got me in good spirits as well this week. So, it's all good, man. It's all good. And Amok, what are you saying, bro? Yeah, I'm good, you know, just been painting in the house. As you see, I just got a little cool and I've got a space to do this video. Everywhere else, it's a mess. But yeah, oh. Manchester, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Manchester. Yes. And I'm happy that Cavani, Cavani. Yes, and Jex, what are you saying, you. fam? I'm all good, bro. United have blessed us with eight goals in the last week. Um, yeah. It's Christmas tomorrow, so we're... A season to celebrate, you know. I'm good. And remember, guys, remember if you're new to the channel, remember to smash that like button, remember to subscribe and share to all your friends. Also, share to people you don't like, people you do like, your ex girlfriend as well, your ex boyfriend. Don't, don't care who you like or you don't like, just make sure you share this video, guys. And, guys, this week we will discuss a couple of things. We will discuss that match against Everton, the game against Leeds. Also, we will be discussing a bit about Paul Pogba's posts about his future. We will also discuss the future of Maurizio Pochettino, who looks like that he could be going to PSG as we speak. And also, we'll discuss the Premier League roundup of the weekend's match and look into the Leicester versus Manchester United preview. But guys, we start straight yesterday's win against Everton, you know. 2-0 Manchester United at Goodison Park. Another win on the road, guys. You know, it's it's looking good for us on the roads, but I don't know about a whole minute. But we're gonna start off with Shingy. Shingy, how did you feel about yesterday's game? Um, <clears throat> it was a good professional performance from the boys, man, especially since we made like nine changes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when you can make so many wholesale changes in the squad, it, it can it can disrupt the team's performance. But you know, we started on the front foot, Everson couldn't live with, you know. Uh, our relentlessness on the attack could have gone ahead early, you know, with Greenwood, you know, shaving the post, Cavani, you know what I'm saying? So we look, we look good, man. We look, we look good. And obviously, I think Everton came back into it. But ultimately, I think we had the quality to to make the right changes to win the game. And and, and we saw that, you know, you know, we brought on Rashford and, and Martial and, um, you know, we, we finished them off. Cavani, El Matador. You know what I'm saying? El Edson Cavani. <laughs> yeah, man. excellent finish. Beautiful finish, man. Cut inside and just slotted it away. So, yeah, man, I was pleased, man. I was pleased. Semi-final, you know, in the first cup competition that we can actually potentially win. So, yeah, man. Good all round, man. Good all round. Ooh. And Amok, what are you saying about yesterday's game against Everton, the 2-0 victory? It was a very good match. No, I'm actually pleased. Very good Christmas present as well. Yeah, like, I was really pleased. Like, in the first half was a bit frustrating because we were, like, really on top. We should have at least had a goal. But, like, as Shingy said, the relentless of the players, they didn't stop to keep going. And we all saw what happened. I was just happy that two of the people actually wanted to see them on the, on the scoreboard, got the goals, which is Cavani and Mattel. I want to see more goals from Mattel. I wouldn't like because I know what you can do. Like, but yesterday was brilliant. Very good game. And Jex, what was you saying about yesterday's game? Um, it was a very good start. The first half was good. Um, for me, I remember watching the game and it hit about 60 minutes. And I was thinking, we need Martial and or Rashford to come on because we haven't got enough players running at their defence, you know? And when both Marcia and Rashford came on, the game changed straight away. Cavani with the beautiful finish. And we're in yet another semi-final. For me, the question is, can Oli finally get us into a final? Uh-huh. We'll see against City, isn't it? Of course. And for me, I absolutely was pleased to get that W yesterday against Everton. 
of course the first people will think that the first half and towards to 80th minute was quite boring but it wasn't boring to me because Manchester United at the end of the day were penetrating towards um, Everton's goal especially in that first half we had plenty of chances so uh, I'm quite pleased with that of course guys we did drew Manchester City and as you were saying Jags, of course this is another opportunity for us to make up for last season and this would you know show us whether we are ready to win trophies if we can correct the semi-finals we've lost last season and step towards the finals that shows progress that shows a bit of improvement in terms of mentality Shing, i'm going to pose the question to you what do you think about us playing against city do you think it's a good opportunity to, for us to you know rectify all our wrongs from last season 100% man, it's, it'll be a good way to, to, to gauge how far we've come. Um, like you said, the word, key word is progression. We got into three semi-finals last season. I think obviously we lost to Man City in the semis of this competition last season. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, the team approaches uh, the game. Um, against Manchester City. I think it's one leg, isn't it? Uh, because It is a one-leg tie now. one leg tie, isn't it? So, you know, we've got to be on the front foot. If we don't get into the finals, which... Uh, I hope there's not the case, then, you know, questions will have to be asked because, you know, I was saying that, um, to my boy, basically, like, his main objective should be to get into, this, obviously, this final, uh, get a trophy and at least finish third, you know, to show some sort of progression. And this is a great opportunity. Do you know what I'm saying? So, you know, hopefully the boys can be up for it and, and, and won't let us down and don't miss childish opportunities. Because the thing that worries me is that when we've needed big results, right, to obviously get into finals or, you know, get the points that we need to get into the Champions League knockout yeah. phases, we yeah. fail. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, we failed against Leipzig to get a point. We failed against PSG to get a point. When we should have beaten Istanbul away or at least get a draw after the poor start we had, we failed to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Three semi-finals last year, you know, we failed to get into one and that's good enough for me personally as a Man United fan. So, like, I'm excited for this game because I thought that basically it'll be interesting to see whether we've we've progressed with the investments that we've made as well. Cool. Well, Amok, what about you? What do you think of us joining Manchester City? Do you think that we can as well rectify exactly what we've done and what can it do for us as well, especially for Oli? Um, I hope we could do that. I really hope we should. I think we should. But are we? That's the thing, because we're not just playing Man City. It's the same team that knocked us out last season and they won the cup. So, like, it's going to be a very hard game for us. Like you said, we have to rectify it. But based on what we've seen so far, going to another final, semi final, obviously, we have to take the chance. Like, Shingi said again, if we fail to qualify to, for the finals, the questions are going to come up. Only or the board needs to answer these questions. Is we cannot be the team that just get to semi finals and get knocked out. I but I hope we do get through against Man City and get to the final. I hope so. Me too. I'm hoping that we will go through. Jex, you disappeared for a bit. What's going on? <laughs> She's like, Jex disappeared. <laughs> well, he'll come back. Yeah, he'll come back. There so, Jex, <laughs> what do you think about this game against Manchester City? Do you think that we can go through? Do you think it's a good opportunity to rectify? Do you think it's a good opportunity for Oli to prove himself? Um, for me, it's just a case of getting revenge. They beat us in this competition last season. True. In the semi-finals, the boys need to look at this game as a final in itself, and we need to come back with the W and get into the final. Um, I think we can do it. I think it's an advantage that it's just the one leg this season. Let's just get that 90 minute game over and done with and get the W. I'm expecting us to go to the final. I know it's high expectations. City haven't had a great season for me this season so far, but we can put it on them. We can't fit. We shouldn't be fairing City at all. Cool. Cool. I personally think that it's a very good opportunity for Oli to show exactly whether he himself has progressed and learned from his mistakes from last season, you know. And if he can get that team, get the tactics right against City and get the team to the final, then he, he to me, he's still a PE teacher to me, but it kind of upgrades <laughs> himself from being a PE teacher to what, you know, a Sunday school football coach. You get me? <laughs> you get me? So, yeah. 
I, I believe that we could we could knock out City. Yeah, I'm feeling confident. The boys themselves, as you saw at the end of the match, they look confident. Manchester United are looking confident as a team. Let's talk about the substitutions that um, Oli made. You know, obviously, hats up to Oli. You know, I've always criticised him with his tactics and his substitute decisions. Another game where he got the substitute right, you know, with Marshall making a heavy impact compared to Marcus Rashford. You know, what did you guys think of that? I'll start off with you, Shingi, again. Yeah, I mean, I think he made the, the subs at the right time because, you know, <clears throat> the game's kind of getting a bit flat and you could see that the game was going towards penalties. Do you know what I'm saying? So we needed, like me said, um, you know, we needed players to be running beyond um, their back line. And, uh, you know, when he brought on Martial uh, and Rashford, it changed the dynamics. I don't think they understood how to kind of defend against, you know, um, to defend against the change of tactics because he went from a diamond to a 4 2 3 1. Yeah, I'm saying, and obviously, you know, Martial started, you know, dropping into the pockets as well. Funny enough, and that's how he managed to feed, feed in um, uh, Cavani for the first goal. And then I think obviously once we got the first goal, you know, that that killed them. That killed them. And then you saw obviously they tried to go for it, and then we just killed them on the counter attack. Do you know what I'm saying? Bruno hit the bar when he could have fed in Rashford. Do you know what I mean? But then obviously sl- shortly after that, you know, I think. Rashford had the opportunity where I thought Cavani yeah, was going to score a similar type of goal that he did against them um, at Goodison Park earlier this season. But he yeah. passed it back to Rashford and then Rashford obviously didn't manage to score. And then obviously, on, I think the other, the last counter is when Martial, you know, slotted it away. It was good for him to get a goal. Do you know what I'm saying? Because exactly. he's, he's been very, very inconsistent. He's had a poor start to the season, uh, I believe. So, you know, he needs to get back to the you know, he, he, he's firing ways of last season. Cool. And Amok, um, with Marshall scoring, how pleased was you to see Mar- Marshall score? Very pleased. Very pleased. Because obviously, he ain't been scoring that much this season. The first goal this season was a penalty that Rashford gave to him. Mm-hmm. Rashford should have had a hat-trick, but he gave him the ball for him to have his first goal. But like, he just had to cut that, cut from that goal yesterday, he just keep going. But I ain't got doubt in him. Like, if he put in the work week after week, it's a consistent performance. He means one of the best in the world. Like, I, I told Jack that the other day. Like, it's really good. So, for him to be on the scoreboard, was, I was pleased as a fan. And I just got credit. So I just got something to say. Yeah. Us fans should be happy about all these um, substitutions and stuff. Oli already said at the beginning of the season, he's got enough quality in the pitch and off the pitch. So if we, all we've got to see is the win and see performances and see how they play. Like, obviously, we've got to not just concentrate on counters, but actually go in the work, like, play some type of um, 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 football that makes the man's eat type of football or maybe ask for type of football. Or what? not even, <laughs> no, the past. <laughs> No, hey, not, 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 not losing, Re- yellow card. The pass. No, I yellow card. Like, awesome. No, no, no. They're getting 70, 71 percent of yeah. the ball. We're still yeah. losing 2 0. Uh, I don't want to lose, but mm-hmm. I want to see football. But yesterday we, we had 65 possession of 65 percent possession of the of We the always defense. get possession in the second half. Mm-hmm. We don't get possession in the first half. Watch the stats. We always get possession in the second half. So all these um, um, substitutions, that's what we see. Most times when he makes these substitutions, if they don't work, we get upset. All he needs to play football that's from the start to the end. Like, you put in that, but I know what he's saying, though. Bringing in Mash Rashford and um, 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 Martial obviously changed the game. They couldn't handle them two players. For me, I think that's the gem that we've got this season. Uh, Ma- Ma- Rashford and Martial, them two just playing together. Bruno just, like, oh, I don't know what to say about Bruno. But them two together this season, they've been doing this. I like them still. And Jax, let me ask you a question. I know everyone saw exactly what Edison Cavani done to Yeri Mina. Yeah? <laughs> Jax, <laughs> I, I, I saw him choke a man, you know? Grab the know. Things, you know? <laughs> Jax, do you think Edison Cavani was lucky to stay on that pitch? That he should, do you think, or do you think he should have got sent off? Me, personally, I would have sent him off. Because unfortunately, in this day and age, mm-hmm. 
if I put up my little pinky and touch someone on the forehead, it's a red card. You just can't lift your hands at all. And I feel like as a professional footballer, he should have had the temperament to, to not do that, you know? I'm very lucky that we wasn't in the Premier League when it happened because VAR mm-hmm. would have sent him off, you know? Straight away. But um, we're just getting away with it again because Fred done something similar in the Champions League, even worse, and he got away with it. Cavani now is getting away with it. I'm just hoping that the United Patel players... Patel did the same thing against Tottenham. Tottenham and oh. got sent off. I think it was, it, the lads need to just get their head yeah. together and stop doing this, man. It was that South American rivalry, boy. Uruguay versus versus Colombia, fam. You know, yeah, what I mean? they, they pulled was. that. They pulled you that. Got, you know what I'm saying? They must have said yeah, something yeah. to each other. Yeah, definitely. man. Definitely. <clears throat> they definitely language, did, trust me. They definitely did say something to each other for Edison Cavani to grab his throat like that and yeah. squeeze his what's it called Adam Apple. I I that saw reaction, his that, Adam that Apple get squeezed. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey guys, we're moving on straight to that wonderful, wonderful victory against Leeds. That 6 2 win. Scott McSauce, Scott Perrion, you know, you know, Scott McMail, you know, Scott Sky, Spicy Mail, whichever you want to call him. Man of the match performance, you know what I'm saying, guys. Very, very good win against our arch nemesis, our rivals, going back to the times that we was young before our time. How pleased was you, Shingi, to see that victory against Leeds? Yeah, I mean, like I said on, on my show the other day, like, we had to be on the front foot because... Make sure you Leeds... watch that show, guys. Love, I had to love. say that out. You know, I'm a <laughs> <you know? laughs> But yeah, I mean, we had to be on the front foot against a team like Leeds who they, they're relentless on the attack, in it. Do you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I didn't expect, uh, you know, uh, McTominay to, to be, like, you know, a box-to-box player like that, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I thought he was limited in terms of his offensive play, but, you know, he showed us what he can do, you know, when he does get forward, you know, the first goal, the technique on the shot, excellent, you know, and the second goal, the way he took it and slotted it away, but it was brilliant. And, you know, that credit to Dan James, you know, he's been in the cold for a long period of time, but, you know, he he took his chance, do you know what I'm saying? And um, like my, my boy said, it was a type of game that was going to suit him because there was space in behind. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Because he's not yeah, really yeah. good on the ball. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, Leeds did play into our hands, man, because like I said, you know, they basically parted the Red Sea in the midfield. <laughs> they they left Cal- uh, Calvin Phillips exposed. Do you know what I'm saying? And we just, we just picked them off. We just got in behind them and then picked them off. But, you know, it was good to see that we started the game well because... I've been complaining since Southampton last season. We start games sloppy and every game seems to be like a rescue job, which is so annoying. But yeah, we started well and uh, we beat we beat our arch nemesis, you know. And James, Just... what, what were you saying about that match against Leeds? How do you feel about that? Um, do you know what? I have a lot of respect for the way Leeds came out and played at Old Trafford, you know, because even when they were 4-0 down, they were still having a goal. It was still almost end-to-end football. So it was a great game for the neutrals. Um, a great win for us. I'm very happy that Scott played as well as he did. To get the two goals, he was excellent throughout the whole game. He had a lot of passion. He had a lot of running in him. And it's great to see, you know. Um, Leeds, I feel, as, as much as they have their DNA and their style of playing, it wasn't suited for that game. I feel like it was a tactical error from their gaffer. They should have maybe sat back a little bit more, knowing that we're not great at breaking down teams, and that may have swung things for them. But I'm very happy with the way we played, um, scoring six goals at Old Trafford and beating one of our arch rivals. You can't complain at all. Can't That's complain. Sad. We were in 16 years. Lee's waited 16 years for this and they ended up getting their ass whooped. I don't know <laughs> what it something was. to the cleaners, bro. Trust me, man. It and must be McSalty. It must be McSalty. <laughs> now, Mook, what did you think of that game? It was a good game, though. Like, if I wish that's how we start all the games, just go, go up, just put the fans to ease. They don't have to come back from behind and be in the match. But it was a very good game. But Manchester played a football that I never really seen that we played. But I think Leeds 
kill themselves. They give us too much faith. You, you cannot give Manchester United that much faith and not get beaten that bad. You see what we do to teams that play tight? The little space that we get, we're taking it. Like, so, I'm really pleased with the performance. Even though the stats were shit for us, it's just good. we had more um, shots and wherever. But they played very good. You have to put thumbs up to them. Even though they get packed in, but they played good. Manchester need to, like, do that more often. We cannot complain. 60, no Trafford. We haven't scored six since the HD gold. Yeah, say nothing. But to be honest with you, I, I was quite pleased as well, you know, as I was saying on Shingy show the other day. Um, just to see Manchester United start well and end well, you know, it's pleasing because it's been so long since we've seen a full 90 minutes where Manchester United's energy stayed the same. They kept oh. the same energy, kept on attacking, you know, kept on scoring goals, you know, you know, because at times our problem was killing off teams, you know. We was too nice and linear against other teams in the past. But it's, <laughs> it's a bit of progression. It's a bit of progression. It's not the biggest progression, but it's like progression of what? What he's trying to do, but you know, I hope I hope whatever he's trying to do becomes successful. But we move on to that, uh, and we go straight into Paul Pogba. You know, recently, of course, of course, not 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 that much people spoke about this, and of course, the Pogba haters when they saw the post, of course, probably just simply just ignored it and said, "Yeah, he don't mean what he's saying." You know, he's just lying and etc. Blah 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 blah. But you know what? Yeah, it's not. It just, it just, it just, it just when you have an agenda towards a person, you'll never believe them for anything. You have an agenda, screw it. Whether they say something that's that that pleases you, that you don't care, you know. Or even when the person plays well, you don't care. You still sl- slander them, you know. You you can see it in Paul Pogba's posts every time he posts himself and we win and he does well, you know, scores a good goal. Hey, 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 hey. Paul Pogba recently, I believe it was about a week or two ago, came out and said, I've always fought and will always fight for Manchester United. My teammates and the fans, blah, 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 is not important. The future is far. Today is what matters. And I'm a thousand percent, you know, not a hundred. Man said a thousand percent involved. Always stay strong. All has been clear between the club and myself that will never change. When you don't know what is going on, inside don't talk now that i know definitely was addressed of course to the haters and the media you know yeah actually i'm going to ask you a question you do that post do you think that's a commitment post or that's a post that just says shut your mouth bit of both to be honest i mean <clears throat> the, the pogba debate is just, it irritates me because like you said like there's an agenda against him it's clear as day do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And anything that anything positive that he does, the haters, they're always going to find some sort of counter argument. They've made up their minds, do you know what I'm saying, on mm-hmm. him. And then mm-hmm. it, it's, it's never going to change. Do you know what I'm saying? Pete, you've got some fans saying that he's toxic in the dressing room. That That is so stupid. He's one of the most liked players in the dressing room. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know where they get, you know, that that thinking. I, I You know, I don't understand the comprehension behind that. Um. You know, I, I think obviously people's gripe comes from the fact that he hasn't, his performances haven't been to the highest of, let's say, someone like a a prime Luka Modric or prime Tony Cruz or or a, a prime um, Kevin De Bruyne. But at yeah. the same time, we have to look at our team. The conditions haven't been the greatest. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, it, it, he fell out with Mourinho. Mourinho's footballs and great. You know what I'm saying? You know, but so sure he's a new coach. Um, I feel like, you know, he's starting to get better, more consistent performances out of him, especially this season and towards the back end of last season. So just just, just leave the guy out of your mouth, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, just leave him, leave him out of your mouth because anything that he does, he gets a haircut. He, he dances at his brother's wedding. The haters it's, are going to... It's a crime, you know? It's, it, yeah, it's annoying. Man. And I, I just hate talking about it because it's, I think it's, it's, it's a useless debate because the haters have made the dis- their, their minds up. They've made their minds up. Yeah, no, of, of course they've made their mind up. I totally agree with you. I, I believe that whatever Pogba does, even if Pogba took us to Europa League final or won us the Premier League, scored the, score, the, the winning goal to win us the title of the Premier League, yeah? Mm. Those pagans will still say, ah, 
you know, he needs to go X, Y, Z. So I believe at this moment of time, there's no fixing this situation. They've made up their mind. And with those people that hate Paul Pogba, if I'll be honest with you, I was saying to Amok the other day, if you ask them, what's your reason for you hating Paul Pogba? They, is, they won't have a legitimate excuse. It's not, oh, they're going to say he has an attitude problem. I'm like, bro, oh, I didn't know you was friends with him. He got, he's got an attitude problem. What? You speak to him on a daily basis. What? He was rude to your mom or something. No, because people in the club, people outside the club say the guy's respectful. Even right now, the way he hasn't left us. Look at, you look at Sanchez, you look at Lukaku, their behavior, you know? They didn't want to be here and they, they, they made so much noise. But you don't see that from Paul Pogba's behavior. His agent talks and his brothers talk, but that's them. You can't fault you. You can't fault me or you can't fault someone for whatever their family member does or their entourage does. That's them. But as I was saying to Abu, if you ask me, if you ask people like that that hate Paul Pogba, they will just tell you how oh, his attitude, oh, he 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 he's got um, what's good this, he doesn't work hard. And these times statistically, he always finishes within the top three of what highest um, what's the distance covered most dribbles you know most complete dribbles all sorts of stuff even when he went was in premier league team of the year two seasons ago you know he tops the chart so whatever they say you can counter attack it in fact too much haircuts david beckham had plenty of haircuts what's well look at salah so salah was at his brother's wedding in yeah. egypt during the yeah. corona Virus pandemic, he he caught the virus, but nothing. No silence, silence. No silence. You know what I'm saying? But right. then you know the Pogba haters will be like, "Well, Salah's been performing this, that, the other." Shut up, man! Like he Salah shouldn't have been at his brother's wedding with no mask. Do you know what I'm saying? He, he Bro, wasn't. You can't guy. say that. I will be at my brother's wedding. Are you dumb? Yeah. That's, your, that's your family. <laughs> Like, yeah, that no, what I'm saying, I, I, I'm, I'm not criticizing Salah yeah. for going to his brother's mm-hmm. wedding. I'm just saying, in terms of the media bias, in terms of how they've reported it, you know, yeah. it was in the same way they would report if Pogba went to his brother's wedding during a pandemic. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, definitely would have got roasted. And also, <laughs> furthermore, Paul Pogba as well, his lifestyle, there's nothing wrong with his lifestyle. Most of the times you see him snap, he's with his, fr- he's with his mom, he's with his kid, he's with his wife. He's with his brothers. Clearly, you can see that that's a family man. You're not seeing him wake up in the middle of the night, filming, saying, guys, make sure you stay home, yeah, and make sure you wear your mask and stay safe, wash your hands, and then leave his house and go and crash his car after having a party, abandoning the ship and going back home. Like Grealish. Grealish. <laughs> Grealish. Grealish twice. Grealish twice. You know, last week, Grealish. Lego like, woman. That black woman, if that was Paul Pogba naked with a black woman like that, finished. Come on, how do you feel? Like, I can't really emphasize too much. You guys just said it all. Like, but why is it the most hated player in the Premier League? But you know what's funny? Mm-hmm. My mother in law came to the house, I think, and went, like, not Tuesday. She asked me, why is Pogba the most hated player? In, we all I know. Put it onto her. No, like, I could, I would I would look, ask anyone. Look, I'll say it with my chest. I'll say it with my chest. Like, he's it's because Liverpool. he's black and he's Muslim, and he's French. English people don't like French people, so it makes it even worse. Black, Muslim, French, simple. <laughs> this guy worked hard. He never gave it. Like, for, I know his agent might come out and say whatever. He's making money. This guy is rich enough to buy his own football club. Do you know him representing this place? It's for job or it's for whatever. No. He's, we, when we sent Pogba, how much did he get off that? What Pogba deal would have gone through ages ago? He stole the deal because his percentage wasn't right. So, of course, he's going to say much. Let him talk. But that's the difference. He said it. His brother and his agent, they're talking. But his performances, it's good. He comes to training every time. He never missed. Like, always putting in work. He's not that player that has to put in, like, chase around in the pitch. No, that's not his football. If you see him how he plays for his country, if you see Cooper playing for his country, build a team like that around Pogba, you get the best from Pogba. You saw him in, in Juve. Build a team like that. Pogba did not chase down, like, no. He ain't going to play like McTominay. I understand why McTominay plays the way he plays. He plays passion. 
Because he knows he's shit. Compared to so have to that I work. know you, I'm shit, I will do more. Put in that work. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? But mm -hmm. the haters, it's just hard. Like, just because someone, it's like other people can get it past. It's like, but what can't get that past that other players get it. Everything this guy does, making headlines. He was injured, sitting at home, doing funny videos. Having fun with himself, he's making headlines. Why? I don't know. I, 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 I why, why do people hate Pogba this much? I don't this, know, man. Let me tell you the reason why. They know. want him to leave Manchester United because yes. they know he's a very good asset to the club. So they know when we lose Manchester, when we lose Pogba, it's like you said yesterday, it's going to be a decade for us to re replace Pogba. Like that player, that's, he's going to come back to the club. He's going to come to the club and do what Pogba does. It's going to take us 10 years to get that player. Like, it's for us to lose the, like our growth, the, that, that the development that we're doing. Pogba is part of that development. So you take a couple of that development, what happens? They ship that like, lens. And they're doing it well. The media is actually participating in this. It's just sad. It's, that it's one of them. Sad. And you know one thing I don't like about this country, you know, they 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 see the media as gospel. Whatever they say, they believe in. They don't even use their their mind initiatives and look into things properly. You know, yeah. This whole COVID, for example, this whole COVID situation, how it was handled, should make you realize how stupid the government is with the media as well, with all that um, stuff about the temperature rising and um, COVID cases rising. I, like I said, I work in healthcare, and what I see on TV is not the documents that I read. It's not the same as the documents that I read. So, and then you have people who believe in the whole situation going crazy, you know? But what I see and what I read is completely different. Uh -huh. so, uh, that's just me saying, don't believe everything you hear. But Jax, what you, what's your opinion on all of this? Especially his posts as well and how the media's just been just on him and our, even our fans. Um, <clears throat> it's sad because Pope is one of my favorite players, man. And I, Having watched football all my life and loving football, I can actually see what he does on a pitch and I can see where his strengths lie. Mm -hmm. um, for me, his post doesn't suggest to me that he wants to stay. For me, that suggests to me that in the summer or in January, if the likes of Real Madrid or, ba or Barcelona, Bayern Munich, if one of those big clubs can put a bid in for him, he'll go. And we've, we've come to this acknowledgement or we've come to this... Uh, to the end of the road with Pogba, he wants to leave. He's going to eventually leave. And it's sad, but I feel like the quicker we accept it, the quicker mm -hmm. we can look for his replacement, the quicker we can move forward. It's unfortunate because there are a lot of haters, um, both inside and outside Manchester United. Um, it doesn't weigh up to the statistics in comparison to other players within our team. Pogba has been better than a lot of our players over the last two two years. So why it's always Pogba, Pogba, I'm not too sure, you know? But um, from that post he posted, for me, that says he's going to leave. He's 1,000% yeah, with us because he's a professional. Even though the media are against him, there was times when he had beef with Jose, he always gave his all on the pitch. I say always. There were times where I could put my hands up and say, he could work a bit harder, but mm -hmm. he's been that's one of on the Mourinho. Goals. That's on the Mourinho, Mourinho days. Exactly, but um, I feel as fans, the quicker we come to the realization that he's leaving, will be the best for all of us. But that's the thing: the player is not bigger than the club. Beckham left, and we still went on and done our thing. Yeah, so, but yeah, but now, yeah, listen, uh, I can challenge that. Yeah, like, the player's not bigger than the club, but when when Ronaldo left, when Tevez left. When Keen left, when Retire left, we didn't do nothing about it. We, to this day, we haven't replaced that Cristiano Ronaldo. We don't have a right winger. It took us 10 years and plus counting for us to get a certified right winger. When Gary Neville retired and, and Rafael left, we had to make makeshift left backs and right backs for Gary Neville. But I'm not that mm -hmm. confident. And with Paul Pogba considering him, you know, even if Paul Pogba said, 
um, guys, I would like to stay and sign a new contract. Me, myself, I would personally DM him and say, bro, I love you. Leave. You know? Oh. Just leave. Because It's not like... Because at the end of the day, it's because those fans mistreated him. Two seasons ago, last game of the season. The, I, I don't know. I, I, what, Strefford in? A fan, a couple of fans abused him, telling Oli that he's shit, he needs to leave. While I see man like Jesse Lingard standing behind like this, like trying to avoid abuse. That day, the <laughs> day that a man was fasting, that day said to me, Paul Brother, you should leave because that hurts. That hurts, you know. It hurt my heart as well when that yeah, look, yeah. using Pogba. It hurt. Yeah. It hurt. Because I feel it. Yeah, I you're black, I'm black. You're black. I feel it, bro. Yeah, I understand. Like Muslim, we got that belief in strength that no matter what we go through in life, no matter what you put on the table for us, we go fight it. For us to give up and stuff, it's hard. And I can see that from Pogba. And he just he he's a very religious person. And we goes, just create goes Mecca every, goes Mecca every year. So I don't every know. Every year. Very on. religious person. Mm -hmm. Like, so I we're gonna lose not just a player, we're gonna lose a character. Like, that's for sure. But I hope he can stay. But like, I hope that Islam Bro, you can hold. Got, I'm gonna DM no, him. No, 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 listen. I'm go. telling you, like, I hope that because I want him to win trophy for us. Yeah. Like, I want all his haters. All these haters that are sitting there saying whatever they're trying to say, that blogging, like going on social media saying, crossing off over and doing whatever, that's them. Sometimes in life, when you put someone say to you like this, 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 the only way you can defeat your haters, it's like when you go on top, like when you do things that they didn't expect you of doing. Like the, obviously, if, like you said, if football wins the Premier League with us or wins Europa again with us, the Champions League with us, let me see how much you're going to hate. Do you think them haters are going to have that much views after it's been all that? No. The haters are not left. But if he really wants to go to push his career, because Bro Boy is 27, you get what I mean? Like, let him go. I said, this, I said to you last year, I want him to go because they hate this too much. I gave up last year. Okay, moving on to that, from that, I mean, we move on straight because we have to be as quick as we can. With Pochettino news, but as you know, guys, Pochettino has been in talks with PSG since PSG decided to sack Thomas Tuchel on Christmas Eve. Can you imagine, you know, on Christmas Eve, one day before Christmas, you know? And I bet you the worst present. I bet you right now, when that guy got sacked, even Oli woke up and looked at his email, and I believe Oli <laughs> looks at his email every day because he he can't believe he imagine that imagine. He has to check hey, his email to see if he hasn't been sacked. I bet he checked his email that this morning as well, Trust just to see me. that what did stack him just in case because of Poch. But Shingy, how do you feel about the um, Poch you know potentially going to PSG? You know, I've been an advocate for wanting Pochettino to manage Manchester United. Um, I think he's a seasoned coach. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> recording the podcast. <laughs> but um, one second. But um, yeah, I mean, I've been a seasoned um, season. I'm thinking about a season. Now. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, wanted, I, wanted, I wanted Poch to, um, to to manage Man United, but I think he's had enough of waiting. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't look like Solskjaer's going to be sacked. So, you know, <clears throat> it is where it is. You know what I'm saying? It'll be sad because if, you know, we do end up sacking Solskjaer, then we would have lost out on a potentially fantastic manager that you know that could take us to the next level. Like we lost lost out on Klopp. Um, we we should have had Mourinho. I think two years before we actually got him. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we had more characters back then. But you know, it just seems as though that we don't move in line with you know when managers are available. The top managers are available. But good luck to him if he does go. Do you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I, I'll. Inside, I'll be disappointed, but if Oli can obviously take us to the to the heights that we want, then I'm all for it, man. It is what it is, man. Yeah, I'm very disappointed in the fact that he's going to PSG and make putting making Pochettino wait like that. You know, you know, it kind of reminds me of um, Manchester United owners being that guy that's been cheating on his wife with the sighting and told the mistress that don't worry, I'm gonna leave her. We'll sort a new life together. And she's there waiting, 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 waiting. Eventually, she, the mistress says, no, what, F it, I'm out, I'm gone. 
That's how it feels like, you know, because Manchester United just, just, just wasted all that time, like, just waiting for the right moment. Why wait for the right moment? Be proactive, not reactive, and dump the guy. You know, it's from the moment, as soon as we got knocked out the Champions League, that was the moment to just bring Pochini, you know? I'm going to, how do you feel about Pochettino going to PSG quickly? Like, I'm just upset. You just, like, Nietzsche, I just got a laugh to what you said. Just the best example you can give. How long are you going to wait? Like, if, if he gets the job, I believe he's going to do very good. Which means if the third tell me now very good managers, you've seen Liverpool, the growth since they got club. You've seen Man City, the growth since they got pet. Mm-hmm. But where are we? We've been taken. That we go over you know, you're, you're like we swearing at me. Like, what's going on? Middle finger. Yeah, no, I'm not swearing <laughs> at you. I'm just counting. It's this first, isn't it? Like, what's going Like, you get what I mean? Uh, it's just upsetting. Really upsetting. We losing on the best, and we always settling for only type caretakers. Yeah, uh, it looks like we're settling for the ugliest for woman in the, in the club. That's what it. You know the, like. uh, we're you know settling girls, for the ugliest you know, woman in the club. No, them girls, the, the girls that get pregnancy just because they want to, they want to stay. They want to stay. Yeah, that's only death. Right. I don't know what he's done. <laughs> you know them ones like that. You know them girls. I that don't know what he's done. Who, only who can't get go. pregnant for you. Just, just to keep you right. in life just for eighteen TV. years. Yeah, yeah. Just for eighteen years. Jax, how do you feel? Uh, yeah, it's a case of if you snooze, you lose. Mm-hmm. Do you want man to be out <laughs> of a job for for five years waiting for you? No. <laughs> What's always going to happen when you get a manager of that caliber? Any change in any of the top 10, 10 teams, there's a chance that he's going to get snapped up. As we've stated in past shows, we're a reactive club, so this doesn't come to a surprise mm-hmm. at all. Um, I can, Keyword. I can, I could foresee Oli being sacked in May, and then we're coming to a point where we're looking around for the next best thing. Who's going to come into the club? But well, we've lost opportunity now. So I guess, like I've been saying over the last couple of weeks, as much as we, some of us don't want Oli to be the manager, we just have to back him now because it looks like the club are looking towards the long term and Oli looks like he will stay, especially if he keeps performing well. So just got to back him. Yeah, it's li- literally it. We just have to swallow back him the, now. Got to swallow the pill now. Exactly. What if it don't work? What if it don't work? It become a tested situation. Yeah. That's how it is, man. It is, it is what it is, man. I, mean, I, think me, I think me hit the nail on the head here when he said we're, we are a, a reactive club as opposed to a proactive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we've had many opportunities to get rid of Solskjaer and bring in Poch. Do you know what I'm saying? And We do sentiment. <laughs> we do sentiment. But yeah, we hopefully he proves work. that that was wrong, though, man. I hope so. We, that, we just got hope for the best. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully. I'm, I, now I'm definitely with my fingers crossed. Hope that Oli <laughs> upgrades from a Sunday coach, um, what's called football team, um, to a, definitely a Premier League coach. Because I'm hoping now, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that he finishes his course. Because at the end of the day, he's on an apprenticeship scheme at Manchester United. Him, Matt <laughs> Phelan, actually, Matt Phelan, I don't know, he's on a retirement plan. You've got Kieran McKenna as well, coming from the under 18 to the to first team apprenticeship work experience. Michael Carris on work experience right now. So he's How many years now? Day, man. For two years, man. I would have sacked him by then. But yeah, guys, we got moving right straight to the Premier League round up, of course. Um, guys, of course, this is the part where you tell me your favourite game of the of the past weekend and why as well, of course. Shingy, what was your game of the week? I'm obviously going to go for the War of the Roses. Uh, being, yeah. Being six two. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. I mean, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I mean, obviously, Liverpool, they were very impressive against Crystal Palace. But I think when it got to 3-0, 4-0, I switched it off. I was like, you know what? I, I can't sit there and watch Liverpool demolish Crystal Palace in that fashion. So I was like, you know what, it is what it is. But yeah, man, at, at least we managed to follow that up, you know, being our fear, one of our fiercest rivals, 6-2. So that, that would be my game of the, the weekend for me. And Jax, what about you? Come on, man. This is only the second opportunity in, what, two months <laughs> that I could choose United. But I'm definitely going to choose United. Come on. Uh, 6-2. Yeah. 
the great thing for me about it, or the most important thing, was the way we started. We started exceptionally well. <laughs> if we can carry that first 20 minute performance into every first 20 minutes, we'll, we'll do well this season. I'm hoping so. I hope that it will be a consistent thing. And Amok, what was your game of the week? Of course, it got to be our game, the 6 2 game. You can't, we can't skip that. It was a very good game, very played. Like Jake said, if we can put in that 20 minute performance every mm-hmm. week, like we should be competing for the title. My game of the week, of course, is my second team that I support Arsenal Football Club, of course. That defeat against Everton. <laughs> also, the defeat. Yeah. That, uh, no, no, that was a game. You know? I, enjoy, I thoroughly enjoyed that game, you know. You know, just to see my, my team lose, you know, because I'm all set out right now. So, week after week. Yeah, week after week. How many week, weeks now? My London team just keeps getting it, man. But it was a good game, man. Well, it was a good game for Everton. For Arsenal, I don't know. But I enjoyed it. I just love seeing my team lose anyway. I, I love it. I love You're it. You're a troll. Yeah, I'm a troll. Yeah, obviously. Why not? You know, Arsenal fans deserve to, for us to be trolling on them because for so many years we've been betting them, but they troll on us. They call us shit. Yeah, they, they just hate him, man. I don't That's get it. Them. Yeah, man. So I'll give Arsenal. You're better mm-hmm. than Arsenal. Ten mm-hmm. to better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right now we are, you know. And I will move us straight to that match that we have this weekend against Leicester at 12.30 on Saturday, guys. I think that will be on a BT Sport if you guys live in the UK. It could be on Super Sport if, you're, if you've got the DSTV connection in Africa, you don't know. Obviously, it might, be, it might be on the NB Sport if you're American. NBC Sport, I mean. Yes, guys. What, um, Chingy, how do you oh. feel about the game against Leicester City? It's, it's it's a big game. I mean, we've got a couple of tough games coming. I think we got Wolves after that as well. So, you know, if, if we want to be serious and, you know, cement our place in the top four, these are the type, types of games that um, we, need, we need to be winning. And if, you know, anybody has any thoughts of winning the Premier League, it's the type of game that we have to win. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. We're away from home, so it's not going to be easy. Leicester, you never know what you're going to get from them, but you know, they, they do cause a lot of big teams' problems. I think Vardy will be back for that as well. James Madison looks like he's in form uh, again. So, you know, it'll be a tricky, tricky game, but hopefully we can come through and get the three points and keep on kicking on. Do you know what I'm saying? And Jax, what about you? What do you, how do you feel about the game against Leicester? Do you think, we'll, what's your prediction in terms of scores? Um, I want to predict a win, you know. I feel like we're coming off some good momentum at the moment. So, and the fact that we're away from home, we seem to love playing away from home. So, I'm not even going to use that as a uh, anything against us, you know. Yeah. Um, they're one point ahead of us. We've got a game in hand. So, it's a perfect opportunity to leapfrog them and sit behind them on the table. So, I'll go for a 2-1 win, United. Say nothing. And Amuk, what, what about you? Yeah, I'll go for 2-0. Two, two Obviously, I'm mm-hmm. Manchester to win. But it is the start of the second round in, the, in this Premier League season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it is the start. No, so wait, really we, 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 did we play? We have a, we, this is our first game against Leicester this season, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll um, yeah so, so almost, did we skip? No, we haven't skipped the team game, yet because we still have game a game. 14. Back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, what, what team did you play in the first? What team did you play the first game again? Palace, man. Palace. Premier League. Yeah. Palace. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's gonna be because like, it's almost the start of the second half of the Premier League. Yeah, season. it will be from January. If we sh- we should start hitting that three point, like we should be getting three point. Like this ain't no joke. It's January. If you find yourself on the on the the first under the fifth position. It's going to be hard for you to break for that fifth position to make it Champions League a win title. So that we should work hard to get to that position. Like at least third, sit there, cement that position, and you see what happens. You know, but we I, definitely need to win against Leicester. I, for some reason, I don't know. Like I think Oli is making me feel confident. I've been drinking some Oli juice recently. <laughs> <laughs> I feel confident, you know. Are you a troll? I, I'm. 
I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm I'm there thinking, I'm am I really on the out now? Because the guy I asked you the other day. I asked you the other am day. I, am, I out? am I really? I'm not I don't I don't know. I'm like swaying a bit. You man your zap. But one defeat can make me go back to where I was. Yeah. But I believe, yeah, I feel like we will win against Leicester just to just 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 to chase and just keep a tail on Liverpool. Because of course people believe we're in a title race. I don't believe we're in a title race yet until February, if we're still there. Yeah, if we're still there, February, late February, then yeah, we can say we're in a title race. But right now, it's too early to say that we're in a title race, you know? Yeah, man. We've yeah. seen teams after Christmas fall off, do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, like you said, for me, I, I, I'll, I'll even give it until mid-March, you know mid-March, what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't believe yeah. I'll give it till like mid-March. I'll give it till May. I'll give it to the <laughs> last day of the season, <laughs> I knew it. Bro. Definitely. Just mm-hmm. you, if only you know you don't know what you're getting. So Patrick, you, it's good that you're optimistic. We'll just go accept reality. We're ready for whatever. Yeah, man. You never know with this team, man. Especially with Oli in charge as well. You just never know. No, but the players, the performance that the players been putting in this past six weeks. Yeah, uh, you can't complain. We can't complain. It's been brilliant. Cool. But anyway, guys, we have come to the end of the show. It's been lovely, of course. We thank you for watching us always. And of course, let's just go straight with the guys to find out where you can find them. Shingy, where can the people find you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twitter and Instagram, Shingy underscore LDN. Um, follow uh, the channel, YKTS Football as well, Twitter and Instagram. And, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel on YouTube, which is you know the score TV. Um, yeah, takes two seconds to subscribe, you know, subscribe to Red United TV as well. You know, as I keep on saying, it doesn't take too long to push that subscribe button. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. And Jex, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Jex underscore United. Yeah. And Amuk, where can the people find you as well? Uh, they can find me on Instagram, Freyflaco underscore 16. Say nothing. And of course, guys, as always, you know you can find me on Instagram. I've run on the school spice my personal, but remember to actually follow the official Red United TV Instagram account, which is Red United TV One, baby. You know what I'm saying? And as of, of course, remember to smash that like button, subscribe and share to people you don't like, you like or not, you know, share to your grandma as well. Even your de- even your dead. Your late relatives, share it to them as well. You know, man needs it in it in heaven. Many subscription in heaven too. You know, you get me. But guys, of course, it's been lovely as always. You know, as I always say towards the end, remember to keep it united, and also remember to keep it red united. We are out. Peace out. Love, been a pleasure. Um,